Tune in to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. We have our returning guest, Ned Balavance, to walk us through how we're going to validate our Terraform code and use GitHub Actions to deploy our resources into Azure. So tune in. Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. With us this week, we have a guest that's been here before. Welcome, Ned. Hey, April. Uh, thanks for having me back. I guess it didn't do too bad the first time, huh? I love having you on the show, Ned. Always great to have you back as a fellow Hashi ambassador, a fellow East Coaster. What's not to love about you? I mean, what's not to love about being a HashiCorp ambassador? It's a fantastic program and nominations just closed. So I guess we're going to find out soon if we made the cut for next year. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, please let me make it. I do all sorts of great things, but we'll see. We'll see. So good luck to you on that. So welcome back. For people that haven't seen your awesome face here before, can you tell them what it is you do? Sure. Uh, my name is Ned Bellavance. I am the founder of Ned in the Cloud LLC. I'm a HashiCorp ambassador, like you said. And what I do is create educational technical content. That's my main focus in life. So you're here today to show some cool stuff with Terraform and GitHub Actions and some code validation. Am I right? Absolutely correct. So last time when I came on, we put together a GitHub Actions workflow to deploy Terraform code against Azure. So we were standing up some Azure infrastructure. That was the idea. And we wanted to do it in a way that wasn't too scary. So we didn't try to add too many bells and whistles on it. So uh, if I could take you through the current workflow as we set up in the previous uh, demonstration, and then we'll see what improvements that we that I made in the whole process. So moving over to my, uh, my slide deck, and don't worry, there's not too many slides. Uh, <laughs> In our current workflow, we had a main branch. And when we wanted to make a change to our infrastructure, we're following a GitOps workflow. So we'd create a feature branch. And then within that feature branch, we'd start making commits. And that's where GitHub Actions would kick in. Every time we made a commit and pushed that commit up to GitHub, it would kick off a GitHub Action. But it wasn't doing anything yet. It was just there. It was like, yeah, I could do something. And as we made additional commits in our feature branch, every time GitHub Actions, like, I'm ready, I'm going to do something. But we're like, not yet, hold your horses. Once we get to the point that we're ready to deploy this update, we'd create a pull request to merge this feature branch back into the main branch. And that would kick, up, kick off a GitHub Action. And in that one, we would run Terraform plan to plan out the changes. And then we would add those proposed changes as a comment in the pull request that was open. So we could see, yeah, these changes look good. And then if we like the changes, we could merge the pull request. And that would kick off another GitHub action, which would in turn run Terraform apply and apply those changes to our infrastructure. So that was the basic workflow we set up. Not too scary. We took it step by step, right? Now we can take it another step further and start validating our infrastructure as code. And the way we're going to do that is to start adding some actions to our commits. So in our updated workflow, we're going to take advantage of two things that Terraform has built in. Terraform format checking and syntax checking with the commands Terraform FMT and Terraform validate. So FMT just makes sure that you're, stand, you're following HashiCorp's standard formatting guidelines. And if you're not, it will actually automatically format for you. We don't want to do that. We just want to check. So we're going to check the formatting, and then we're going to run Terraform Validate, which actually checks the syntax of your code to make sure it's valid against Terraform and its providers. So we're going to run that every time we commit an update and push that update to the feature branch. Then when we get to the pull request, now we're going to introduce another tool. So we're still going to run Format and Validate to make sure that's still good. We'll run Plan to get the plan into our comments. And then we're gonna run a tool called Checkoff. April, have you ever used Checkoff? Are you familiar with it? I have, I've used it quite a few times, Ned. Excellent, all right, so this isn't news to you, but it might be news to the audience. I'll pretend, I'll, I'll act surprised. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so what is Checkoff? Uh, it's, it's a uh, solution created by Bridge Crew that does static code analysis of infrastructure as code. And that sounds like a lot of words, right? So let me, try to condense that down a little bit. It takes a look at your Terraform code, and then it has a whole bunch of policies 
and best practices. And it compares what's in your code to what's in the policies and best practices and says, and flags your code and says, you know, this doesn't line up. This shouldn't be here, or you should add a setting. It, it makes recommendations. That's essentially what it does. And you can use the policies they have out of the box, or you can write your own custom policies that make sense for your organization. So that's essentially what Checkoff does. So now, now that we know that, let's walk through the updates to our workflow in GitHub Actions in that YAML file. So the first thing that I mentioned is we're gonna run Terraform format. So this is the step in our GitHub Actions workflow that'll run the Terraform format. And we only want to run this on feature branches. So the if statement says GitHub ref, if it's not equal to main, run this. And the thing I want you to run is Terraform FMT dash check and check just returns zero if there's no formatting problems and one if there's any formatting problems found. So it would fail if it found formatting issues. Then the next thing was Terraform validate. So for that one, again, we only want to run this on feature branches. So we'll say GitHub ref is not equal to mean. And we're adding another thing in here, which is and success or failure, which looks at the previous step, which was our Terraform format, and says, I don't care if that was successful or if it failed, I still want to run validate on top of that. So we get to run both tests every time we push a commit up to the feature branch. And then the last one is check off. This one's a little more complicated, uh, but the if statement says we, run, we want to run this when there's a pull request. We're going to use a GitHub action called check off from bridge crew. And then we the with statement gives it all the arguments that would you would use if you were using checkoff at the command line. Um, and we're skipping a bunch of checks here. So it, there's a lot of checks in checkoff, uh, mm -hmm. as the name implies. And we don't want all of those applied because it would be a ridiculous list. So I, I filtered some of it out to make it a little easier for us in, in the demonstration. So that's all the changes to our GitHub Actions. So do you want to take this for a spin? Should we jump over to that? Before we go, I think we should talk about why this is important, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, like yeah. why do I want to do all these things? Why do I want to validate my code? Because it's just going to pull up all my errors that I've made as a human. True. But that's exactly why we want it. Because so many times we make changes to production. We don't want to do that in production. Or if we're going to a development environment or pre-prod or UAT environment, et cetera. We want to know, have we written good code? And this helps us write better code because a lot of people that are using Terraform may not have a true developer background, right? They might not be an engineer. They might work in infrastructure ops and aren't comfortable with these kinds of things. So these help you know, remediate the human errors. And we want to run tests on our code because early and often, that's what we do in DevOps. So this is really important to do for everyone. And when we build this into the pipeline, it means we don't have to do it, but it helps us fix what we've messed up and write better code. Yes, and I make mistakes all the time. So I'm always running Terraform format and validate before I try to do anything. Uh, and this just kind of does it for you, which is which is nice. We know we're pushing quality code. Uh, so let's walk it through its paces and see it in action. Um, so I'm gonna cool. switch over to Visual Studio Code where I have this already loaded. Okay, here is Visual Studio Code, and we have the main portion of our code in the file main.tf, because uh, I'm real creative that way. Um, and you'll notice there's some formatting issues in this file already. On line 35, the spacing's not quite right. And there's a validation issue. On line 30, I'm reference, referencing an attribute of the Azure resource group that doesn't exist. So hopefully both of these things are going to fail. Um, the branch that I'm on is ADO Labs. So once I commit and push this up to GitHub, it should kick off the GitHub action against this branch. So I'll just call this ADO Labs test and go ahead and sync that up. And then we will switch over to the browser and I'll show you what's happening with Terraform, uh, not to, GitHub actions in the browser. Cool. All right, we're over in our GitHub, GitHub repository. And if you want to try this out for yourself, you can go to this public repository and fork it. And it has directions for you to set this all up yourself. If we go over to um, actions, there's the ADO labs test. And sure enough, it failed. 
And if we want to know why it failed, we can look a little bit deeper. We can see it failed on two things. It failed on Terraform format and validate. And you know, just looking at the format one, it says error. There's an unsupported attribute. You're referencing something that, that doesn't exist. So you probably need to fix that. OK, so let's go back to Visual Studio Code and fix our two errors. All right, so the one thing we need to fix is the spacing in here. I'll go ahead and fix that. And I'll remove the bad reference and add the good one and save it. And I think that should do it. So now we made those changes. We'll call it fix. And hopefully that fixed all of our changes. So we can go back to the browser and now with any luck, it will have passed successfully. So if I go into actions, now it's running. There we go. And so it's gonna run through Terraform format and Terraform validate and hopefully come back clean on both of those. Uh, and once this is gonna run against your code before it gets officially pushed and checked into the repo. So it's that protection against the repo you can trace where those errors are and you can back out and fix them before they become a bigger problem in your code base. Exactly. So now Terraform format has a check, Terraform validate has a check and we're green. So this has, I fixed my errors. Now I'm ready to open a pull request to merge this branch into main. So I'll go ahead and click on that and create the pull request. And once I create a pull request, that's going to kick off the next set of GitHub actions. So we can see now there's a new actions running ADO labs. And this one is going to run through the checkoff process. Mm -hmm. So uh, there we go, it's pulling the bridge crew and it's gonna run through all the steps um, and then eventually get down to bridge crew. So woo, lots of stuff scrolling by. Now, like I said, Bridge Crew has a ridiculous number of checks and policies. So the first time you run it, if you don't tell it to skip anything, it's going to come back with 30 or 40 errors on your code. And that might be a little scary at first. Uh, you can filter some of those out. They may not be applicable. <laughs> and that's what I did. So it's running through Terraform plan now. And there we go. It did fail in checkoff. And that's that's kind of difficult to look at, right? So let's go back to the pull request. And you remember, this is being added as a comment. So if we go down and look at the comment that GitHub Actions added, it says everything was successful except for the checkoff. And if we look at the checkoff results, it tells us here's the two errors that you have. It's saying you know you have to ensure that the web app redirects all http traffic to https and ensure secrets are encrypted so we can easily go back and fix one of those if we go back to our code i have it commented out right now but i could uncomment https only and save it and then commit it and push it and now that one would be valid however as i said <laughs> checkoff is always adding new things to the policy so looking in here, there's one for Git to make sure that all secrets are encrypted. I haven't actually seen that one before, so this would fail on another push. So now I have some research to do to go figure out, is that something I need to actually work on or is that something that I can now ignore? <laughs> so it's it's probably something I should uh, pay attention to because encrypting secrets is important. So that is. is our updated workflow to validate our infrastructure as code using the built-in Terraform tools and using the tool checkoff. Awesome, Ned, thank you. Well, so while Ned goes and creates a GitHub issue and resolves his checkoff errors, <laughs> you all can tune in, go to the repo that Ned has published. It is public for you to take on and replicate what he's done and, and use his workflows and get started using GitHub Actions to validate your Terraform code. So we'll put all those in the show notes. So Ned, thank you again for coming on today. It was always a pleasure to have you on the DevOps Lab. And thank you everyone for tuning in and tune in next time to the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.